Okay, so here's the problem. The figure shows a system of two concentric spheres of radii R1 and R2 kept at temperatures T1 and T2 respectively. The radial rate of flow of heat in a substance between the two concentric spheres is proportional to, and we've got some options here. So this is a setup, uh, two concentric spheres, inner radius R1, outer radius R2, inner temperature T1, outer temperature T2. So from the symmetry of the setup, we can conclude that the heat flow is only radially. And it will be radially outward if T1 is greater than T2, radially inward if T1 is less than T2. It will be radially because there can't be any tangential component in the end because there is a symmetry. So in other words, uh, if we consider any hypothetical concentric spherical shell between the two given spheres, the heat flow per unit area will be constant and therefore we can conclude that the total heat flow is actually directly proportional to the area of that uh, concentric spherical shell and the area of a spherical shell of radius r is simply 4 pi r squared. Also in our steady state condition the heat transfer through the spherical shell will be proportional to the temperature gradient the radial temperature gradient there because there can be no accumulation or depletion of heat in that spherical shell because it is in steady state. And so Q will be directly proportional to dt by dr, that dt by dr is the radial temperature gradient. So putting these two together and adding a constant of proportionality k, we get Q is equal to ka dt by dr and a is 4 pi r squared. Rearranging, dt is equal to q divided by 4 pi k times dr by r squared. And now we integrate. The temperature goes from T1 to T2. The radius goes from R1 to R2. And the rest is very straightforward. It's just uh, algebraic manipulations. And we will get q is equal to 4 pi k times T2 minus T1 into R1 R2 divided by R2 minus R1. And so if we look at the options given earlier, it is option B, that is the answer.